I got a disgusting new loadout for you guys to try out. But first, let me ask you a question. When was the last time you ever saw Trinity nuke? What's good folks, it's Nightmare Frame here with a new Warframe video coming at you with a nuke Trinity build versus level 9. It's an, it's another level cap content video. Yes, I, I know, I have a problem. But listen, for those who enjoy it, hey, this is perfect for you guys. And you don't necessarily have to take this into level cap. It also works perfectly fine in regular missions. And it's insanely good for pretty much every type of content that requires you to kill. And, and for enemies that have a little bit of trouble when it comes to taking damage. Because with this loadout, you're kind of ignoring their defenses and going right for their health. That's right, it's an Energy Vampire Trinity build. But what's so special about this Energy Vampire Trinity build? Well, it's made stronger thanks to three things. One of them being Viral Procs. The other one being Archon Shards. And the third one is a lot of strength, just pumping a lot of strength so you know so you can do more damage to the enemy but first let's understand what this ability actually does so the main ability i'll be using here is energy vampire trinity's second ability it is primarily known for its energy ability that it gives energy to you and allies however it does have that annoying thing where it pulses for a while usually you would mod this for negative duration so it releases the pulses faster or mod it for a lot of duration target the enemy and then kill it for then the energy to be dispersed. But as you can see, I've modded for negative duration for this particular loadout. The other important thing that you have to know is that it deals true damage. This means it ignores defenses and goes directly to the health. So what's another way to increase our true damage? Well, this ability does scale with strength. That's awesome. Another way to increase damage done to the health is by debuffing the health. By applying viral procs, now you have the health take more damage to that health, which is a 4.2 times damage multiplier directly to the health. So now increasing the strength increases the damage of the ability, priming the enemy increases the damage done to the health. Now we have Archon Shards. These are weird Archon Shards, but let me tell you something. You don't necessarily have to use green shards. They can be purple, green, or orange shards, but they have to have the specific bonus. And that bonus is bonus ability damage when they have corrosive stats effects. However, you can use the orange version, but you need radiation and you can have the violet version or if you have the electric. However, I'm using corrosive because I want a specific type of effect on my weapons. And you can easily do that with radiation. However, if you're taking this into disruption, the radiation is not going to be so good. But here's something that can be a bit difficult. Corrosive and viral on one weapon. Usually that's easily done with nourish, but I don't have nourish. But I am recommending you two weapons that are perfectly awesome for this particular build. The Buba Nico and the Kumpressa. Amazing weapons for priming. The Buba Nico is known for its easy self-priming and you can deal insane damage with its primary fire. However, I'm not building any of these for damage. And the entire run that I did, I didn't kill any enemies with my weapons. It was just a pure ability build. And the best part is, is that you can spam abilities like crazy because she can return that energy fairly easily. So the Buba Nico's alternate fire procs viral. But then enemies just need to have corrosive on them. And you don't have to worry about the armor strip. It's just the priming effect. And then you have the Kumpressa. So when you shoot this, of course, it detonates in a small AoE, but it's really good for single target. And it's nice for priming that one enemy that you want to be primed. And because it's a secondary, you can put the Cucumber Arcane on it so you can have additional status effects. So you have two options of amazing primers. 
However, the Bubonico is good for massive groups of enemies because it has that explosion, while the Compressor is good for the single target priming. My helmet ability is marked for death. Yes, this doesn't allow you to spread Giga Red crits anymore. However, it's still a very good helmet. You mark a single target, and whatever damage you deal to that one target will spread a portion of that damage to nearby enemies. And this multiplier caps out at 150%. However, what if that target is debuffed with viral and you deal true damage to that target? Amplified damage. So priming them with a the corrosive viral, mark that guy, kill that guy, boom, 2.8 million damage throughout. Pretty potent. Now, even with Eximus. Yeah, those are Eximus units, and that was one cast. So let's go over into Steel Path just to show you how this feels like in action. All right, good thing about Trinity is that I don't need to start off with any energy pad in the beginning. Now, there are a few issues with the Mark for Death helmet ability. It does have some line of sight issues. So yeah, as you can see right there, enemies who are just underneath the stairs did not get hit. And something you gotta know, you have to target the correct person. Otherwise, you're not going to have proper damage spread. And here's something else. This guy has less health than that guy. If I target this guy and use him for Mark for Death, it won't deal as much damage to the other guy. So you need to find a chunky, healthy target. So either tank your enemies or even Eximus units. So Butchers are not the greatest targets you want to be aiming for. Try to find... I mean, if it's an Eximus Butcher, sure. All you have to do is Prime, Mark for Death, press EV. Prime, Mark for Death, press EV. It can get a bit spammy, so that's another downside to this because I know there's a lot of people who don't like pressing buttons. So another Dante situation where it's very OP in the damage department, but <laughs> it requires you to be somewhat of an active player. Wow. Oh, perfect. Here's a perfect example of an Eximus unit. So I target that guy. Boom, way more damage. See, 3 million damage this time. That guy, see, he had less health. It didn't spread as, as much damage. But target this guy, boom, way more damage. So the chunkier the target, the more damage spread. See, there's an Eximus unit right there. Prime everybody. Boom, giga damage. And if my shields do break, I do have Blessing to replenish my shields. But notice another thing. Me using my second ability all the time replenishes my shields and even gives me over shields. Oh, yeah. It's because of her second ability augment. So if you replenish excess energy, it gets converted into over shields. So it's a nice way to regenerate your shields. And these over shields get shared with allies. But when it comes to acolytes, eh, I wouldn't suggest using energy vampire as your main way of killing them because it's 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 not going to work it's going to take a long time so you can just use your melee weapon and heavy attack them to death and depending on what focus school you're using that can of course increase your damage and if you're doing cascade you're definitely going to be using matter eye so when you activate void strike it's going to deal even more damage with every hit speaking of the acolyte perfect There you go. Dead. Okay, so here we are back in the orbit just to show you how this build works. There are two variations, of course, the one for Cascade and the one for Survival or anything else like that. Now, if you're doing Cascade, you have to use the Matarai Focus School. Of course, because Void Strike and Contamination Wave, two amazing buffs to deal against the Thrax in their ghost form. Without this, it's just, it, it's copium. You're, you're going to tickle the enemies. Or if you're not going to use Matarai and you're playing in a team, make sure you're with someone who has matter eye so they can debuff them with contamination wave and you can still of course drain your energy and use an ability to buff up eradicate and onslaught and taking a look at the equipment you got to have your amp you can use the 547 or the 577 and for this particular one i was using the 577 which is the kantic 
Propa, and Certus. Magus Cloud for the large Void Sling radius, so you can hit those rifts fairly easily. Magus Lockdown for the lockdown if you're, you know, trying to lock down a target, especially Acolytes, and annoying enemy units if you want to build some Incarnate Charge, shooting them in the head, if you're doing, of course, a gun build. Eradicate an Onslaught, your Amp base damage, and your beautiful crit chance increase. So here's another thing that you can use. Damage Blessing. This Damage Blessing is a 25% roar for everything and this includes your amps a lot of eidolon hunters use this but you can use it if you want a little extra edge if you're fighting the thrax units so now that you know my helmet and archon shards let's take a look at the build starting off with the booba nico its alternate fire has viral so i modded it for corrosive and cold the reason we have cold here because it slows down the Thrax, but having cold here also procs Frostbite, increasing my multi-shot. We don't care too much about the critical damage, but that free multi-shot is so good. Fire rate, magazine capacity, multi-shot, more status chance, and status duration. This is pretty huge. And this is projectile flight speed. So the Bubonico offers a larger radius for enemies, and the Compressa is for that single target priming, which is really nice. It shoots out bubbles and then detonates. Similar concept to the Bubonico build, corrosive and cold. It has innate viral, so that free corrosive is really nice. More reload speed because this weapon has annoying reload speed. Prime slip magazine for a larger magazine. And finally, cucumber for the additional status effects. Now for those wondering, hey, why don't you use eject magazine? Unfortunately, eject magazine does not work on the Compressa. I don't know why. It, it makes zero sense. So unfortunately, you cannot have Eject Magazine. For those wondering what Eject Magazine does, it reloads your secondary if it's holstered. And yes, I own 27 of them. But unfortunately, you cannot equip Eject Magazine on the Compressa. And now for those thinking, oh, what about Epitaph? Well, if you can get Viral and Corrosive on the Epitaph, sure, it's going to be amazing. Way better. You won't even need the Bubonico or the Compressa. But let's have a look at that Trinity build, shall we? All right, in the aura, we're going to have Growing Power. When you proc a stats effect, boom, 25% bonus strength to all of your abilities. And then in the Exilus, the best mod in the game because spending less time on your bunt is a huge DPS increase. But for those screaming and running, but Trinity has Link, it's status immunity. Just, just wait for that. You'll understand why. Now, for our strength, modded strength, we have... Blind Rage, Transient Fortitude. Oh, oh, wait, wait, what's what's happening to the duration? And to drop that duration even further. <laughs> Fleeting Expertise. Yeah, good, good luck with that 1.5 seconds of Link. Good luck. Now, why am I dropping the duration? Well, it's because to drop the pulses for Energy Vampire. The more duration you have, the more pulses it does and the more it lingers, then you would have to physically hit the enemy and you won't have that instant nuke. So these two are my modded strength. And of course, growing power is my conditional strength increase. And for another conditional strength increase, I have Molt Augmented and Molt Vigor. I don't really need more duration uh, and, and nothing else did fit to this loadout. So I just had Molt Augmented and Molt Vigor. Molt Augmented, just get 250 kills and boom, 60% bonus strength. Molt Vigor, when you're in your operator, you use an ability, you gain 45% strength for the next ability cast on your Warframe. And that's easily done in Cascade. But otherwise, you can use whatever other arcane you want more fire rate the parkour velocity with arcane agility it really doesn't matter at this point just make sure you have strength to not let animations shine i am running natural talent because i have five green shards on my trinity so there's no room for yellow shards casting speed in general improves all of her abilities just makes it more fluid to use and of course you're going to be using mad Rai. in cascade you're going to get 50 percent additional bonus casting speed thanks to power transfer for some survivability boom rolling guard yes she has her fourth ability where immediately gives her shields and heals her bank up but unfortunately we don't get that 75 percent damage reduction lasting a bit longer but for consistency with shield regeneration boom we got vampire leech as you can see excess energy replenishes shields by 150 percent so this grants you shields and boom goes into overshield territory i'm running two range mods you have augur reach and stretch however if you're doing survival right you can drop both of these move this here run over extended 
and put another strength mod. This is if you're doing, you know, survival because you want to have a bit more strength, but even more range. Again, two variations. Either run the stretch and auger reach setup or run the overextended and umbral intensify. You're still going to get a bunch of strength. The other one just gives you a bit more damage. Funny enough, you can even just have the stretch mod by itself, but you have to know that Mark for Death isn't going to give you a larger coverage. It's only 14 meters in its explosion radius because you're going to need a way to add clear. So this is a nice way to add clear. But when you're facing the Thrax unit, range doesn't really matter at that point. For my melee, I'm using the Praetus because it's all about that movement tech. As you can see, I got the sprint speed evolution and the parkour velocity and just modded for your average heavy attack. Boom. That's it. It's got exposure for that raw damage, really good against acolytes and some radiation. And it's a Tomfa, so heavy attacks will force proc bleeds. So yeah, guys, this is the ultimate God of Destruction Trinity. And it's shredding level 9k like it's nothing. If you do enjoy this video and learn something from it, please do feel free to give a like, share, and subscribe for more Warframe content streams and so much more. Do refer to the description. Thanks for watching. And as always, a peace. Bye-bye now.